In this lesson, we're going to talk about crown ethers. What exactly is a crown ether? Crown ethers are cyclic polyethers. They're cyclic, they form like a ring structure, and they're composed of many ether functional groups. And the reason why they're called crown ethers is because they kind of look like a crown. So let me give you an example of one type of crown ether. Notice we can count four ethers in this molecule. So it's a polyether and it's cyclic. Now this particular crown ether is called 12 crown four ether. The generic name is X crown Y. X represents the total number of atoms in the molecule, whereas Y represents the number of oxygen atoms in the molecule. So a 12 crown four ether tells us that there's 12 atoms in total in this molecule, four of which are oxygen atoms. Now the internal cavity of the 12 crown four ether, it fits well for the lithium ion. This crown ether does a great job in solvating the lithium ion. Oxygen has a partial negative charge and each of these four oxygen atoms, they're attracted to the positively charged lithium cation. Now there are other types of crown ethers as well. Here's another example. So this is the 15 crown five ether. And it's good for solvating the potassium, I mean not the potassium, but the sodium cation. Each oxygen with its partial negative charge will help to solvate the sodium cation. Now the 18 crown six ether that can solvate potassium. And the 21 crown seven ether solvates the cesium ion. Now crown ethers are very useful for increasing the solubility of an ionic compound in an organic solvent. So let me give an example. Let's say we have one bromobutane or butyl bromide. And we want to react it with potassium fluoride using benzene as the organic solvent. We want to replace the leaving group bromine with fluoride. Now the only problem is that potassium fluoride is an ionic compound. Benzene is a nonpolar organic solvent and so potassium fluoride is not going to dissolve in benzene. Butyl bromide will dissolve in benzene because this is relatively nonpolar. But potassium fluoride won't dissolve in benzene. So in a situation like that, we can't get these two to react. However, if we were to introduce a crown ether, we can solvate the potassium ion in this organic solvent. So let's draw the 18 crown six ether. So we have 18 atoms, six of which are oxygen atoms. And each of those oxygen atoms will help to solvate the potassium ion. Now notice that the outer part of the crown ether is nonpolar those are carbon hydrogen bonds. So because of the outside is nonpolar, it's going to dissolve in benzene while solvating the potassium ion. Now, in order to maintain charge balance, fluoride is not going to be too far away from potassium because fluoride is negatively charged. It's going to be attracted to the potassium ion. However, it's not stuck to it. It is free to react with butyl bromide. So the crown ether in benzene 
helps to increase the solubility of potassium fluoride in benzene. Now, because the potassium ion is solvated by the crown ether, this nucleophile is free to react. And so fluoride is going to combine with the carbon, expelling the leaving group, giving us one fluorobutane. So that's the purpose of crown ethers. It really helps to increase the solubility of an ionic compound in an organic solvent. And it helps to solvate the metal cations, allowing the nucleophile to be free to react with the substrate. And this is an SN2 reaction. So crown ethers, they're polar aprotic solvents, and they work very well in SN2 reactions because they increase the strength or they enhance the abilities of the nucleophile in an SN2 reaction.